uh, but it's the one that's laying down, you know, the black dog, Anubis, the one that's the long ears, but he's, but the one that's prospered, you know, is laying down with, on, on the hind legs and stuff, you see, the dog Anubis, you put this dog on your automobile, and you don't have to worry about no clock stopping you. You put it on all the movement. When you're flying on an airplane, you put this, you imagine this. It's called creative visualization. Now, Dr. Devil Blair tells you, if you can't imagine it, it ain't real. But for the mere fact that you can imagine it means it's real. And the last one of them damn buildings downtown was in somebody's imagination before it became a reality. Okay? So you can take this dog, a nubus, an ant poop, and you can take this particular dog, and you can put this dog... On your car. Put him on the plane. Put him on the airplane. I put him on top of the plane. You don't have to worry about it. For women walking down the street, you imagine this same dog on a leash. Nothing will come of you. Nothing will attack you. You see what I'm saying? Um, and I'm really saying this about the automobile. Also, I'm, I'm one of the Yoruba ones in, in West Africa, they take some red meat and you rub on your tires, on all four tires. Go buy you a pack of red meat and rub that blood on your tires. You don't have to get it on all the tires, just rub it on most of the tires. On, you know, just make sure you get it on the tires. You don't have to be the whole tire. But just make sure you get that blood and your car won't get in a wreck and you probably won't get stopped. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you won't get stopped at all. These are things that you can do on that particular road. Now why did I say that about your car and I'm focusing on that because they have pretty much locked up most of the people that they can lock up on crack cocaine. Mm. Then there's a group of people that they're not socialized to fall for that. Mm. Or either you know, the ass them been fell for that and went to jail and now you're out and you don't want to fall for it again. <laughs> <laughs> so that they know that there's a group of people that's not prone to be locked down on serious crimes. That's your so-called up with mobile are just basically just good old black folks. <laughs> so what they want to do is they still want to make money off you because that's big business. So they have decided that the automobile is going to be the next frontier, especially in tickets. It's very key that you understand this because a ticket can be $700, $1,000, $800. So now they have shifted from locking you down because they understand that they unlock you all up. In the story, you don't lock up that many people. They in prison. So now your vehicle is the next frontier next frontier for the Cold War. For seizure. For siege. You see what I'm saying? So your vehicle and tickets now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You and they they do it since we was in Chicago, they actually hit the fucking sign. No left turn. They were, they were, these shits don't even be in your view. And then $700, bam. You see? So this is the new thing that they're doing. The war ground and the battlefield is in your automobile. You see what I'm saying? That's the key. So you want to do things like this, like putting the Anubis on your automobile or spitting the elixir for ways. This, you know... You don't even have to even get, do the elixir, which is to put the two together. You can just buy you a bottle of Myers rum, a little small bottle. When you get in your car, you sip it and spit it four ways. One sister drove three years with no insurance and then got stopped and gave them an old insurance motherfucking tag, a, 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 a piece of paper, and they said, go right ahead. <laughs> Remember the Jedi mind tricks? Remember they told them, he doesn't have to stop here. The Jedi, you know, you know uh, when he was on, on Tatooine, Oh, he said, move right along. He said, move right along. Yeah. Where do you think they're getting all? That's African science. You see what I'm saying? That's African science. You see? So we can do these kinds of things in the battlefield. In the battlefield. We, you can do these types of things. You can do these types of things even on your job. You can do these mind tricks and stuff for business deals. You see what I'm saying? You can do this thing where you can, you know, uh, one thing, and, and one that's just tried and true. And we got this from a, a, that Indian reservation in, in, in 1994, where you take a, a, a white light and hit anybody you want to, to be under your will, 
you hit him in the head, imagine a white light busting him in the forehead. And it works, it works, especially when you're going to get, because I'm going to tell you another hassle is when you're going to get shit cut on and, you know, all kind of little paperwork and you got these assholes that's working there. You know, I don't know what it might be. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta hit a person with a white light. You know, you might be go to the airport and lose your driver's license and have to get on the flight. But, you know, losing your driver's license, you shit, you just as well tell the motherfucker that you're a mass murderer. <laughs> <laughs> to get on a flight, you got to hit him in the head. You see what I'm saying? So these are things, we're talking about these types of magical things that we have arrived to do. Also, another key, a lot of people are worried about finances and stuff like this. They say in order for you to go on, it's a spirit thing. Sometimes you got to give up. Uh, I, like I said, one of the sisters down there, she told her mom, uh, they called her to come pay on a car. She said, I ain't got the money. She told her, come get this car. They're like, no, we don't want the car. But she still had to get to that point where she said, come get it. You know what I'm saying? I told my, my landlord, I said, man, I said, shit, man, I, my career is crashed and burned, man. I went from working every week to <laughs> working every month. I can't afford it. Motherfucker said, you can't move. You owe me money. <laughs> You can't move your only money. I got off the phone. I said, the nerve of him. <laughs> and I sat down in the chair, and I didn't figure out about an hour later. Wait a minute, hold on. I just got hooked the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so I started, my, my rent $650. I started paying him $300. He was cool. But then come to find out, he was glad to get anything. But so I was looking at the spirit was saying, you got to give up. I understand he's a damn undertaker. That means that most of his money that comes... It comes through checks. He got to wait for certain things clear. So that means a lot of times they got to put money in caskets. So that means a lot of times they be without cash. They need cash, you know, capital to roll. So $300 on one day is like a thousand. It depends on how your business is set up. You know what I'm saying? So I'll give him $300. He was like, shit, that was like a thousand. I'm like, damn, we get this nigga six fifty for the last two years. But I paid on time all that time. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing, and I'm giving this nigga, to, you know, and shit, I've been nickel and dime in his ass for the last three months. <laughs> 300, 400. I don't go under three, that's insulting. I give him three, four, five. So my shit is 650, I'm going to give him six next week. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but what it was is the spirit kept saying, you got to let go. You got to let go. There's things that you're doing right now, but you don't let go. We have two dimensions merging in. What you used to do that you used to be successful in the physical world and brought you successful gain, you can no longer do that now because the simple fact we got different dimensions merging in. What do you mean by different dimensions merging in? Look at the fucking weather. We had the coldest winter in Atlanta I've known since I've been there. You see what I'm saying? They had, it's right on the Washington, it was on the Washington, uh, the, uh, yeah, the state of Washington, no, it was on the Alaska paper. The state of Alaska, they had a bird on October the 16th with a wingspan of a DC-10, and everybody saw the shit. In Alaska, we got the newspaper. There's all kinds of strange shit happening. And a plane full of people saw a damn bird big as they fucking plane. <laughs> now, because we are not made privy of things, we don't know that the world has changed. You should have known that when them damn sharks was biting up all them people. <laughs> On uh, 2001. And when I went to Denver, they said, we had a bear problem out here. The bear was eating them crackers up. <laughs> you see the world has changed they got cruise ships going out in the middle passage and everybody on the ship getting sick they're not getting sick because of bad food they had one it's simple you get one show ship go out you got bad food when the ship come back people shit sick you don't send another cruise ship out with bad food no they know what's going on they sent another cruise ship out, and no people came back sick. That's because the spirit realm, they were in the middle passage. You see? And that realm, they went out there, and 
the spirit realm contaminated the food and they all got sick. The, the spirits made them sick. During the same time, they put out a movie called Ghost Ship. See what I'm saying? Put out a movie called Ghost Ship. Now you probably get a cruise for four dollars. <laughs> With Isaac as your bartender. <laughs> you know? Tell it. But you gotta understand, we so because we don't know it, I'm telling you it's amazing stuff. I'm telling you, I can tell a lie one day, three days later the lie become the truth. Now that scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> Especially when you know I'm an excellent liar. And I tell a lie, I know it's a damn lie. Three days later, the shit come true. I said, wait a minute, I made this shit up. I can't believe it's happening to me. <laughs> you see, that's all words of power, speaking it into an existence. The dimensions have changed. Y'all stick with me. Now, y'all all right? So there's things you can do, and we got the magical power to do it now, because we're speaking in the light of day. Now, uh, to go back, there's things that have, that have that that's come about, um, and this is the book, the book on Apollo, that came about. This is coming from Cuba. Now I come to find out, uh, come to find out, uh, we find out that they closed down Cuba. Um, it wasn't no revolution. Remember now, was was uh, Castro America's man during the war? Uh, Batista, what else? What's his name? Batista. That's when he. Uh, Batista. Who was on the side of America during the revolution? It was Castro. Then when Castro came to power, he shut down the country. Well, why is it they say that they give him something like $800 million a year? Why do they pay cash for American government pays him? No, they say hundreds of millions of dollars a year. You got to understand, there's no such thing as a foe, not unless you make one. Remember before World War II, the Japanese, uh, were the enemies, the Japanese and the Germans were the enemies of America. After World War II, and, 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 and the Allies were the Russians, and the, the Russians and the Chinese. No, 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 who was it? The Russians and, um, well, somebody else, the Russians. No, no, and it was somebody that's their allies, that's their, that they, that's their enemies now. It was the Japanese and the Germans which were the enemies of World War II. And it was Russia was an ally. Italy was an No, but I'm talking about it has to be a, a, a foe now. It was China. China was an ally because China was invaded by Japan. Now, after, the, after World War II, China becomes the enemy and Russia becomes the enemy. Japan becomes the friend. You see, and Germany becomes the friend. You get how this thing goes? So that means there's no such thing as an enemy to the United States until they make one. This is very important right now because we're going to get into some stuff today on some stuff that's going down. Now, same thing with Cuba. Come to find out that uh, Castro is a Cuban invention, is an American invention, and that was their boy all along. That's how the game is played. That's how the game is played. They got to have somebody to point the finger to say that country is not free to convince your monkey slave ass that's you free. <laughs> That's the number one goal of the book, the occult, uh, the occult, what is it, the occult, uh, the occult science, what's it called, occult science and technology? The occult technology of power, which is the Illuminati handbook. You can put a person in slavery once you tell them they're free. What's my mother tell you you're free and convince you you're free? You can put them in slavery. And we are in slavery. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, they locked down Cuba because, number one, Cuba was, what, only a few miles from Miami. They had gambling, prostitution. They had all of that going on, entertainment. <laughs> they had the travel of all the stars and people and rich people and all going down to Cuba, going down to Havana. 
that everything that Vegas has now, everything, the only thing about it was that they had that Vegas didn't have is they had that magic. Santeria, Europa, Apollo. You see what I'm saying? They had that doggone magic. And they had to shut them down because those two, the magic world, can't exist. You see what I'm saying? When you got vice, because vice is creativity. You understand what I'm saying? All the shit that the Bible tells you is wrong is the creative stuff. Now stick with me because it's all good, because you pious now. And they got the black woman on a piety trip. You see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a whole concept that's going down now. You good. You trying to convince somebody that you good. You know what I'm saying? Good girls go to heaven, but bad girls go everywhere. <laughs> you know, I respect somebody giving me some booty. <laughs> Damn, come my house drinking up my liquor, burning up my electricity, like my grandma say, burning up my electives, <laughs> and hauling the hauling ass. You know what I'm saying? You breaking me off some hey, we friends. We pals. That boy wrong. That's going through the mind of every man. Yep. And guess what? You want to see a sister that's mad and upset? And I, I and I know this because it don't happen to the sisters often. But when it does, it's it's it is it's devastating. When a sister get a brother that she wanna screw and the brother don't screw her, it's much more severe. See, we, get, we, we learn at a early age. You talk to a thousand, you're bound to get two. <laughs> so we love getting turned down. You know what I'm saying? And the sisters is used to turning us down. That's a part of it. But, that when, but when every now and then something new gets thrown in the pot, like a sister is wanting to give a nigga some and he don't get it. You know what I'm saying? That's some devastating shit. <laughs> So it's not like, oh, uh, this is a man thing. Y'all feeling the same thing I am. Nigga come over, you ready to go, and stuff like that, and the next thing you're going to haul ass and don't get none. You know what I'm saying? You be mad at that nigga for a thousand years. <laughs> See, I'm talking about dealing with your mind and not dealing with what society say you're supposed to say and stuff. That's the difference. That's control. You see what I'm saying? So when I was talking about the sexual thing, they was into it, but society told you that you're not supposed to be into that. Which is... Oxymoron. That's insanity. You know what I'm saying? Everybody e either fucking or knew sometime they did fucking their life or know somebody who did. <laughs> so, the vice is a powerful, creative force. Now, you put the magic to that and you got a paradise. Then they come to find out they did this special on Atlantis. And Disney's in this thing? Man, I wish I would have copied it. They did one on Atlantis. They had the movie Atlantis coming out, and they did a special on the, on Atlantis, on, on ABC in 2001, and they found out that parts of Atlantis was right there in Cuba. And now they got people all over the world is digging down there and finding all kind of artifacts in America ain't allowed to come. Because they got to keep that bullshit up. You see what I'm saying? So one of the keys was they had to lock it down because the most powerful force was the Congo rights. And they used to, and, and they said that they said in the morning in Cuba, all we heard was Palo. At night we used to hear Palo. It was in the air. So that means that they was dealing with some magical systems down there, and all that had to be shut down. That's why we're getting the book on Palo now. You see what I'm saying? But we're getting this uh, book on Palo now. And this one is great because for the people who's done with the Europa thing, it lines up the Europa deities with the Apollo deities. So it's a good it's a good one, and this is the book on Apollo. But remember, call a 1-800 number, and a 1-888 occult, O-C-C-U-L-T dash one. And uh, this one is 21 bucks, but it's it's, 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 it's uh, um, uh, I don't see how many uh, pages is it. A little over 150 pages. Um, but it's worth it and stuff because we're talking about material that wasn't available to the Western Hemisphere. You see what I'm saying? Now all this stuff is coming up. This, this stuff is coming out. And they got about 12 new titles that came out um, um, also. Do 
in the same time. Very key that you understand what's going on. So they had to lock that thing down. It's very key. And so they're opening it up now because they got bigger problems and bigger fish to fry. Now, y'all all right? Let's go into some other stuff. Let's go into some other things because we got to lock the cover. Um, lock the cover. Um, how many Dr. York fans up in this baby? <laughs> yeah. The last time I see it, y'all was all proud to listen to Dr. York boys and stuff. Like y'all was into some shit new. Dr. York been out for years. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, what happened to the Messiah? Uh, is there such thing as a Messiah in the last days that can't get from behind some bars? <laughs> That's what I want to know now. What happened to the Messiah? You see, the problem here is at this particular time, nobody's supposed to be following nobody. That's the concept here. The concept here, if you can read, why do you need to be following somebody? So these things pop up every now and then. Now, homeboy get locked down. And it's a part of a government's thing. you got to understand the science behind it. The science is, is this. Let me show you two things that's going on. First of all, they lock him down. You see what I'm saying? They lock him down. Uh, but this is an ongoing thing because it's a war going on. It started with H. Rap Brown in um, 2000. So they go and they send him to jail. Where well, they had it right on the TV that the police officers say they shot the guy who shot the police officer and they left a trail of blood, but yet when they get the H-Rap Brown, he don't have a, a shot on him. You understand what I'm saying? That's very key that you understand this. Uh, uh, but H-Rap Brown messed up because you got to, it's got to be on the spiritual realm. There was a brother, because you don't understand the, the other side of things, there was a brother in Atlanta, who was a part of the Rasta community. And this brother in Atlanta was a part of the Rasta community. He was loved. I can't think of the brother's name right now. He was loved. And he used to sell herb. And it was a turf war. He was selling herb down the street from that H. Rat Brown, um, H. Rat Brown's camp, or uh, uh, Jam Jamil Alameen's camp. And his H. Rat Brown boys went up and shot this brother in the head. But who, whatever this brother they killed, this brother was so loved in the Ross community, this is a 97 children, the Ross community was suffering behind it. They literally was mourning this man's death. The whole Ross and conscious community was suffering behind this brother that got killed. He was well-known Ross Farley. And H. Rap Bond boys killed him. You see what I'm saying? So on the other, on the, on the, on the, on the swing side, you see, he set up a porthole for him to get fucked with. Let's go on. Then you get the colic incident. Number one, like I said, colic was poison. The, 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 the person, Malika, which is the which is the second in command in, that was in his uh, Black Panther party, one of these sisters out of Philadelphia, she called me and told me the whole story on how the brothers who was with him started poisoning him from uh, Washington. From, from, they, they were driving from New York to Atlanta, and they started poisoning him from New York to Atlanta, they started pausing him, and they got reports that he threw up in a McDonald's in Washington, D.C. Then he gets home and threw up the second time, and then goes into this so-called brain tumor, or this uh, uh, or whatever. They take him to the hospital. Malika calls his wife and tells her, look, uh, do you have the um, sheets that he threw up on? Oh, we washed them. Well, ain't you a dummy? You know, well... Uh, where else did he throw up? I heard he threw up on the floor. That's cool. You can see, go get a, a piece of razor blade and chip the, chip the shellac off the floor because the hardwood floor, they can analyze that and see whether that's important. I'm off the floor. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? So she was in the cahoots too with the whole nine yards and stuff. She was a part of that big time, you see. So it was a sting operation where they killed him. Then comes down to your boy, Dr. York. They arrest him. Now, he's supposed to be the living God Osiris. So they put you in jail. You, before you even get sentenced, you're supposed to be. They put you in jail. 
You're supposed to be out sitting on your front porch before they get back to the goddamn police precinct or uh, wherever. You're supposed to be the God incarnate. That's like um, um, your boy Yahweh Ben Yahweh locked up for damn 10 years and he's supposed to be your, the son of God. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So this fool here goes to court and pleads guilty. Now why does he plead guilty? He already in his 60s and they're going to give him 16 years. 16 years to a 60-year-old is, oh, you might as well say give him 100. <laughs> oh, I'm 75 and I'm out now. What? <laughs> so, he goes and pleads guilty. He pled guilty because that's a part of the government operation that he was a part of. You want to break the momentum of a crowd, see, if, he, if you lock him down, you make a martyr out of him. Yeah, I don't need it because yeah, he was, he's a messiah when they was following him. He the God. It's all the books attributed to. There's a, there's a panel that write all these books. He said, he didn't write none of them books. There's a panel. I used to know people that worked on the staff that wrote those books. So he was a messiah to them. But when he get locked up in jail, they can't explain that in a way. So now our leader is locked down. He's a martyr. So the government say, well, we can't have no martyr. He pleads guilty. <clears throat> and what that does, it breaks, the, it breaks the psychological morale of the people. They don't know where to turn. And that's how you... Uh, that's how you pimp somebody. It's called putting the dick in the ass. <laughs> they don't know what it breaks them down because their leader pled guilty. You see what I'm saying? It's called putting the shotgun in, you know, break the shotgun down, click, 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 and put the shells in the ass. That's what that is. That's the problem of prostitution. He pleads guilty and it breaks them around. They don't know where to turn. Last year he's your Messiah. This year the motherfucker's child molester. But the problem here is we still savage enough to follow other human beings. You know what I'm saying? We still savage enough to follow other human beings. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, for, for, you know, I had to I stick my hand in the toilet to make sure that my damn the chain flush. So the little ball will flush in my toilet, and yet you're gonna be following Oh Messiah. You know what I'm saying? I'm cooking on one eye for a goddamn a year until the motherfucker bought me a stove. But yeah, you're going to find all my side. And you know what? I can do it. I can do it because I don't have people that came and wanted to follow me. And you can easily do it. And the government will pay you. The government can give you $40 million if you start a group. And all of them got paid. All of them got paid off. All of them took the doggone money. You understand what I'm saying? Then took the doggone money, all of them. <clears throat> you got an organization, the government will pay you, no matter how militant you are. Remember, Khalid was on the tra travel channel before he died. I walked through Harlem with Khalid Muhammad on the travel channel. Uh-huh. <laughs> Everybody getting paid. <laughs> Everybody getting paid. But it's in the book. The cook. The uh, cook. Technology. The, the, a cult technology of power, a luminary handbook. It tells you right in there. No matter what these people are, they your enemy, fund them anyway. We always got to fund everybody. Because when you fund the people, you got them. They tie it in. That's how you do it. When money changes hands. You see, so now all of a sudden now, a year later, because you know Dr. York made it out here to Houston. The nigga was in, in, in New York for years. Like y'all got some new nigga, but y'all ready to follow the next nigga fall off the goddamn train. Y'all ready to follow them. And you don't understand, there's something psychologically wrong with you when you follow all these doggone people. Half of you following them damn Baba Lows. And them ain't nothing but fucking Afrocentric pimps. <laughs> That's right. All the damn money you got to do, you follow that shit. They can pimp you any way they want to pimp you. You see what I'm saying? Not necessarily saying somebody on the up and up, but they got some pimps up in that shit. You see what I'm saying? All the money. There's some pimps up in there. Why do you say that? Them motherfuckers, the bother the, the, and, 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 because of, and so then you got a whole crew. Oh, I go to Nigeria. My shit is authentic. Well, fuck it. The white man go to Nigeria. <laughs> they, the white man, these niggas in Nigeria has inducted in the doggone ephah 
three million white people in Europe. I didn't say Santeria. Santeria, yet naturally there's going to be a lot of whites in Santeria because that's the whole Latin America thing, <coughs> which is an infusion of both Catholicism, uh, 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 Mesoamerican spirits, and the African, <coughs> Nigerian, Yoruba system, Ifa system. I'm not talking Santeria. I said Yoruba. Three, that means that the only way that they could get that way is somebody black had to make them. Somebody, some nigga from Africa. <laughs> Three million white people in the continental United States this year over. I didn't say nothing about fucking Europe. I said three million white practitioners in Europe. So fuck a fucking damn nigga from Nigeria talking that bullshit. They kiss my ass. I'm gonna hear this shit here. You talking about ancestors. Your ancestors is now dealing with white folks. Your slave master. Now, how do you explain that? Okay, Mr. Yoruba people. How do you explain that? They got one white Jew that sets over a whole segment of Yoruba in the United States. Then they got a white Jewish woman that said that she got a branch of uh, the new branch of Ephah. And she called herself a master. That ain't nothing but a pimp game. Because $4,000 will get anybody here, goddamn. Ted Bundy could be a Yoruba priest. Barbara Bush, George Bush, J Junior Senior can go down to damn Nigeria and get inducted into the dog on Ephah system. And we're talking Africa, because you got to understand, all those shits are defunct now because it ain't about that no more. You see what I'm saying? We got to tell it like it is. Because how do you explain them? Boudoum being usurped every day by white folks. My man uh, went down to dog on um, Louisiana, the, the Marie Laveau's place, and white folks come out. I'm a voodoo priest. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you can't get up in none of their goddamn lodges to this day. You understand what I'm saying? Because they know whatever they got to hold on to, you ain't privy to it. You see what I'm saying? You ain't welcome to it. You see? So that whole thing is a pimp game that's going down. But the key here is the reason why these damn leaders is falling, because now it's for the, for the creative physics or the creative creativity that's got to come up out of you, it's got to come out of the individual. Then the collective. But it can't come out to you, you following a motherfucker. So all those groups, remember the Union Society did a, a, did a research on what they thought was evil. What they thought was evil. And they did a research on this thing and they said, well, evil is organized groups. <laughs> organized Too many Indians and not enough Indian chiefs, and too many Indian chiefs and not enough Indians. Organized groups. You see what I'm saying? That's the con and the individuality, the creativity don't come out. You see what I'm saying? But then again, you already know that black people are lazy. You're not gonna study and research nothing on your own. You wanna go join a damn group and get stuck up the butt, and needles sticking you up the butt and stuff. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of things like that. Because we love joining groups. You see, so as a result, we get pimped. Got no time. Let me get some other science that's going down. And this is a major one. If you don't understand the science, you have uh, your boy running for president this year. Al Sharpton. Sharp. Now, you must understand the science. See, first of all, you know Al Sharpton tried to go down to Miami, he went down to an uh, alternative island and he wanted to uh, uh, convince Asada Shakur to come to like Jamaica or come to one of the islands outside of Cuba so that the damn American government could lock her up. That's big time government agent. Remember now in the tape that 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 that, that company said, he said whenever they set down one of their government agents like Jesse Jackson, they got to replace it with another one. You see what I'm saying? So in that line of that civil rights all-star level, the next person that they can put on that level would be Al Sharpton, Reverend Buffon. <laughs> now, now, Al Sharpton can hold his own against any of them crackers. You see what I'm saying? Don't let nobody fool you now. Al Sharpton give an argument. He can hold. He ain't going to evade no issues. 
just like Jesse, he holds his own on the cracker. But the cracker is not the damn criteria to when you beat up on somebody. <laughs> I saw Muhammad Ali back in 1974 scared the shit out of one of them Anglican crackers. Right. Had him on there, somebody, look at you, dead not scared me, your brain too small. That cracker was shaking. He said, I dare you to challenge me. That cracker was shaking. That cracker didn't say nothing. So that ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know, that ain't nothing to debate them because they're already going to come unprepared. You know what I'm saying? You just put regular scholarship on them that they're not going to be prepared because the simple fact they figure you black and don't know nothing. And they get they get slaughtered in any debate with black people. Plus, they, they know they can't debate no nigga. Hell, a nigga can't debate no nigga. <laughs> we are dancers. We'll come up with some new shit in the middle of some shit. Because <laughs> we spend our lives call it Joning in Georgia. Right. They call it giving hell in South Carolina. What do they call it here, Joning? Yeah. We spent our lives. This, this shit was severe, so like the pastor when I grew up, you got gave hell. And if you didn't know how to give hell, you, man, you better hide. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas would give you hell all day. They call it Joning. So right there is a form of debate. Right. You got to come up with some quick shit before you get slaughtered and everybody standing around laughing at your ass. So we already know. You get to any intellectual and you get in the debate with the cracker, he'll make up some shit. But they got a shit, they, they got a, that's a part of seven liberal arts. In debate. What do they call that shit? Rhetoric. <coughs> the rhetoric. They call that rhetoric. But people didn't know rhetoric was a fucking damn seven liberal arts. Just that the cracker said rhetoric to you, and you just think that that's synonymous to you, don't him motherfucker's full of rhetoric. He uses that shit when he, you know, he uses that shit when he's in trouble. But he ain't quick enough for you. So that ain't no problem. He's going to be great if he goes to the debate. You know what I'm saying? Here's the issues. What do you think about it? That ain't nothing. Hell, it damn, Jeff Bodine could win the president. And this motherfucker's an idiot. Bush. You know, Al Sharpton, you know, we always got to be three times better. That's not the point. But you got to understand the science on what's happening here. By him being a government agent. Now, Jesse had to run for president, and after he ran for president, his name was Gold in the black community. Right. Biggest agent there is. So, this is the science. But he's worse. Now, he's running for president in 2004. People all around the world are saying, <clears throat> we want to know the condition of the state of the mind of black people in America. Okay? Now, unfortunately for you, you let the people define you with your leaders. We don't know the leader of the Chinese people. We don't know the leader of the Puerto Rican people. We don't know the leader of the fucking white people. And we damn sure don't know the leader of the Mexican or the, or the, or, or the, or the Japanese. Why the fuck we gotta have a fucking leader? And where, who? Who invented this shit? You understand what I'm saying? Black leaders. That is because you want to capsulize a people and define a people by individuals. And when you do that, that individual can fuck up and it can be reflective of the people. Right, right, right. That's a savage way to undermine its own. Now, it is Jews that's behind it. The spin god brothers and that whole nine yards. Because guess what? There's only one other people in the world that have a leader. And they're in an opposition with the doggone Jews. And that's your Palestinians. Right. They have a leader. See what I'm saying? The Palestinians, the Arabs. But that that right there, the ones that's in com direct conflict with the Jews, the first thing they that they give them Arafat. And they said, and, and Arafat is synonymous to the Palestinian people. That's a form of warfare. You see, then if you can tear down that person, you can tear down millions of other people. Now, this is the science that they're doing. Now they're pointing. So no matter how much you have learned how to um, systematically scientifically learn how to um, decode this and have formulas for this and all your research in academia they're going to paint the brush stroke for you Miss and Mr. Black Up and Mobile they're going to press plate the brush stroke with you with Reverend Buffon and I try to understand the science here now look at the magnitude that you got to understand warfare here's the president of debate and he's at the president debate with whatever, what not cracker they got up there. 
You understand what I'm saying? He's on the world stage, and he's representing you. But yet, he has a perm in his hair. And he's not a black woman. And systematically, the black man don't have to alter his hair to have acceptance from the black woman or nobody else. So why does he have perm in his head? His words is, well, if James Brown was your idol, you would have a perm true. Well, I'm saying, yeah, if I'm a motherfucking singer, if James Brown is my idol, I would have a perm. And James Brown is a genius in the world of entertainment. But I'm in the world of politics where James Brown is a fucking idiot. Depends on where you look at it. You see what I'm saying? You understand the concept? So they're looking at him now, and they're going, this is a form of inferiority. You are too inferior to wear your own hair. Okay, I can see if he had it cut in the style of the other white men with receding hairlines or whatever they got. Or that one piece of hair combed all over the scalp. No, he got his shit long. And you see his shit lately? It ain't no straightening comb shit. His shit is literally bouncing and behaving. But you don't understand the sight, so what is a form of warfare? They can parade him. Because we need to ask the question, why the fuck are you representing us when we know you're not going to win anyway? What is the criteria here? Well, Jesse already did that, so we can't say it builds character no more. Jesse said, well, it builds character. What kind of character are we trying to build with this bitch? <laughs> and he's representing you. If you don't think he's representing you, understand. Understand. You don't think he's representing you? Understand. People around the world says he's representing you. See what I'm saying? Now, I'm on the plane coming from a lecture, coming from New York, I think, or someplace. I meet an African from Kenya, been in the country two days. He looks at me and say, why are your people on drugs? I said, man, we 40 million goddamn people. What are you saying? You ain't like there's two people? <laughs> I didn't know there was 40 million people. I said, we're the most educated people on the planet. I didn't know that either. I said, we got 111 black colleges still left. I didn't know no such thing as no black college. I said, we got people in jobs in every position in the country except vice president and president. Everything else we've maxed out. I didn't know none of that. You take it for granted because you know these things, but they don't know that. Only thing they know is the, the fool they see on TV, Nelly. <laughs> Nelly is good. I like that new song. <laughs> but that shouldn't be a fucking image in Kenya. No. Motherfucker with a Band-Aid on his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> you see the warfare? Yeah, yeah. Now that's fine. Nelly is fine in a world when you see other people. We ain't saying that meth needed to retire because of the bullshit. What we're trying to say here is there's an image, you see, of inferiority based on the way you perceive all over the fucking world. You see what I'm saying? This cat didn't know. I said, do you know anything about black people here? Yeah, go in the fucking jail. You're all on drugs. Now with that news we got, it. You see? Hmm. Now, they follow up with that news week. now, this is a part of propaganda also. This Ooh. is the news week here Ooh. about the black woman arising much faster than the black man. Oh. And what does it mean? What, what, what does it mean for families and race relationships? Ooh. Now, first of all, you must understand this particular part about this. You got to tell the whole story. The whole story is we live in a systematic form of cold war because we don't understand cold. War. We don't understand. We understand hot war. Hot war is when you see the LA games and they're killing each other and you go, oh man, there's a conspiracy against our black boys. But we don't understand cold war. Explain to us. 
Cold War is basically in the particular aspect where you have a systematic war that's going on, and it don't necessarily have to be with doggone physical violence. That's, right. That's, right. That's what happened between Russia and the United States. And it was all propaganda. Russia and the United States were pimping people and got everybody around the world to fight and kill themselves, indigenous people, under communism and capitalism right. in the two countries that was hollering that shit never fought. That's right. That's right. They went all the way to Africa and killed themselves over that shit. Right. And you know, Patrice Lumumba was faithful. The finger man for Patrice Lumumba was Colin Powell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was the finger man for Patrice Lumumba. That nigga killed more black people than the Ku Klux Klan in his years in Grenada. Big time dangerous cracker. Colin Powell. You see what I'm saying? Now, the Cold War is it's all based on your image. So we don't understand that there's a systematic image and always been a policy to keep black males down. And this is not necessarily for white folks. This is for the black woman. Right. This is psychologically to fuck the black woman up. What's the date? This, 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 this week, March 3rd. It's on the newsstands now. This is for the black woman to believe in actuality, psychologically, that she's more superior. You say, well, how can that be? No, in a slave culture, you believe what the people who designed the culture want you to believe. You believe in that. That's what a slave culture does. Now, the whole concept here is they will put out a movie to tell you it is all right to go with a chewing tobacco redneck fucking his sister in a double wide mm, called Monsters Ball. You don't understand Walker and give him the Academy Award. My point here is there's no problem that said that there's a great black achievement among black women, but you don't need the goddamn cracker to tell you that. It's the difference. See, some things are given. We already know that the, 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 the discrepancy and the dichotomy is vast. We know that the gap is vast. We don't need the cracker to tell us that and don't tell the real story because psychologically what it does here is it puts that shit back down to a superiority inferiority complex. The reason why I'm saying that here is this here. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now, let me break this down on layman's terms. <laughs> There's an ongoing epidemic of black people or black women falling under what is called the Madonna complex or the Hestia complex. It's about a solid movie. Go get the movie. Dr. T and the women. Get that movie. That's a badass movie. Richard Gere is playing the Dionysian aspect. And, 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 and man, I, I said, man, you talking about some fashion? Them, them women up in there was dressing their ass off up in this doggone movie. Dr. T and the women set right here in Texas. In Dallas. In the movie, this is very important. I'm going to go to some, 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 some scenarios to try to understand because this is all spiritual on what's going on here. In the movie, he's a successful gynecologist. Doing the pap smears and all that. So the women, they gravitate around him. His wife is played by Farrah Fawcett. She goes to the mall and snaps and starts taking off her clothes and ends up in jail dancing around in the pool, and then they go to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist says, she, your wife, and so the first thing happens is he, he, he gets out of jail, take her home that night, he started kissing on her, trying to get that booty, and she goes, oh no, we can't do that anymore. Now, when they go to the psychiatrist, they say that she's, um, she's falling into what is called a Hestia complex. And Hestia was a Greek goddess who was a patron goddess that kept the home fires burning. And she was a goddess of the home. But she rebelled against love. In this particular case, she rebelled against sex. In this particular case, the, this woman, Farrah Fawcett, revert, reverted back into childhood. So sex becomes nasty. That's bad. She said, that's bad. That's bad. I can't do that. No, that's bad. Now, 
in psych clinical psychological term is called the Madonna Complex. Get the book, Dr. John Bain's book, the, the Science of Love. It's a badass book, The Science of Love. Dr. John Bain's book, The Science of Love. I think the Shrine of the Black Madonna sells it. And it's a metaphysical book. You can get it in the most metaphysical bookstore. Waters can order it, but I think a few copies might be at the Shrine, The Science of Love. And it's called the Madonna Complex. And that is because, and so what happens here is, the woman comes into a particular psychological um, challenge. In this particular case with the black woman is, her man is all locked up. Her man is all, this is very important. And stuff, because believe me, we might have, get an argument about this, but you best believe the white man ain't got the black woman best interest in her. He gives nothing, he cares nothing, less than a damn about her. So he is not interested in whether she, you see what I'm saying, rises up or not. She's rising up because that is warfare in the Cold War. You make sure that if, the, that if we're in a, 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 a matriarchal culture, mm. and a, excuse me, a patriarchal culture, mm. then you make sure that the man is always, if you're going to go to war with him, he has to be seen shiftless, not by his, you know, not by his people, enemies people, but by his own woman. This is warfare. And it has nothing to do with inferiority or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? At the turn of the century, there were no black men in college. That's right? right? That's right. Because based on social conditions of a patriarchal system, no woman was being educated on an enormous level at that time. It just depends on how you look at things. You see, so obviously, in hell, our children are much smarter than our great-grandparents. You see what I'm saying? Academically, they can do things in fucking kindergarten that it took me to do in the fucking second grade. I'm, a, I'm amazed. You see what I'm saying? Just took them crackers long enough to learn how to teach them. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make here is so it ain't got nothing to do with the black man's mind. But this is a form of warfare. So they put out these particular movies, Monsters Ball, saying that no, the redneck is better than the black man. Killed the man and her damn son in the movie. You see? Then she gains the right to be bond bitch. <laughs> Got to understand what's going down here. So now she the bond bitch. You know, the queen of civilization fucking a motherfucker with 4,000 venereal disease. All the women he done screwed since 1963. The character. <laughs> You gotta understand the sign, because it's all based on a ritual. It's all based on a ritual that's going down. You gotta understand cold warfare. You see what I'm saying? She been in Hollywood ten years and didn't even get the uh, get the roles until she decided to take off her dog on bra. In the movie, what you call it? The first one. Swordfish. You see, most people take off show the titties at the beginning of the career, and they don't do that no more. You see what I'm saying? But see, this is this is a science that's actually going down. Holly Berry been around since 1991. You see? Now, the key here is they're dealing with something with this type of thing so that they can put you under the Madonna complex. And that means is this. They got we know that there's at least nine to 10 million black women in the United States that can't find no man. They got entire whole populations in Chicago, New York, Atlanta, where black women are going celibate. They're going celibate because of the Hestia complex. And as a result, and the Hestia complex can also go, not that you're dealing with the, or the Madonna complex, not that you're dealing with a childhood state, but you have conditioned your mind that Prince Charming has to be the criteria to come to you. Mm. And you say, fuck the nigga on the bicycle. No, you need to fuck the nigga on the bicycle. <laughs> So I'm looking at this thing. They got whole groups of women.
women in Chicago. They're going to get their PhD. They're going to get their PhD. They're in their fifties. Damn, who the fuck gonna hire you? <laughs> Six, they're going to get their PhD, and they're trading the education. So this is what this shit is about. They're trying to excel through this cracker's career. You understand what I'm saying? To offshoot a warfare that he's that they said, well, the black man out of the you don't understand. The same cracker that's, that's put you up to the same one that has shot down this black man. So they have said, so they got thousands of them going to get the going to get the PhD. Come to find out this is a new form of dildo. Because it ain't got no because it ain't like, you know, some of these people are, you know, these people are going back after years and stuff. The celibacy kicks in, then they go back to the education. All because they don't want to fuck the nigga on the bicycle. There are plenty of men out here. But the standard, the Hestia complex and the Madonna complex is they don't, the standards are so high until they go into a delusional state. Delusions of grandeur. The standards are so high. You understand what I'm saying? That they're looking for that particular male that can be the ultimate. The pinnacle society. They're looking for the Denzel Washington. You understand what I'm saying? You know, instead of the nigga cutting meat at the goddamn supermarket. <laughs> That's beneath them. That's the Madonna complex. And Prince Charming ain't coming. Because where's Prince Charming? They're in the jailhouse. Let me tell you, you ever been, if anybody ever been up in these prisons, you, if you go up in these prisons, you probably masturbate 5,000 times because you'll meet your husband every five minutes. Hmm. These, and I ain't no, I'm a heterosexual. These <laughs> brothers be gorgeous in the sense of what you're looking for, but they in the goddamn prisons. You understand what I'm saying? Now, on one concept, what I'm trying to say here is there's, there's thousands of what you these sisters are doing celibate because, oh, that's bad. Maybe God will be good, and the religion don't help. Well, maybe God will be good to me if I stop fucking. <laughs> you see? So I gotta be pious. So you're trading one thing, the pious and righteous. Yes, brother and sister. Yes, I'm, you know, so now all of a sudden the black queen has become a chastity damn queen. I'm telling you what's going on here. So what's happening here, it's a psychological process. So these particular books, you understand what I'm saying? On one hand, they're not celebrating. Newsweek is fucking government. They're not celebrating black women except. Well, that means you got to be still inferior because you have the species half. You have a baby boy. You saying your baby boy is inferior? That's like the matriarchal, the patriarchal thing when men think that their women are inferior. How can your mother be inferior? It's the same concept. This is the reverse sexism. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, based on metaphysics, they understand that there's only one mate, one person on the planet, two people on the planet, where the species half is both victims of sexism. Naturally, the black woman, but the black man is the one only male in history that is a victim of sexism based on the white man feels inferior of your sexuality. Of your sexuality. So he views you as the same xenophobia of fear as he does the woman. And so therefore, you are on lockdown because of sexism. And both of you are on lockdown based on racism. And you got to understand the war. These motherfuckers here are not interested in this. You understand what I'm saying? Now, they came out with an article in 1999 saying this is the best time ever for black people financially. But why aren't black people celebrating? So black people celebrate because black people know, hey, fuck, you don't dictate to us when it's the best time financially. Have you ever gone to the fucking supermarket lately? <laughs> Prices are unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? You know, so this whole concept here, here is, is here, but it, look, it's interesting because in this particular article here, y'all all right? Yeah. In, in this particular article here, greed, a powerful weapon of blacks. Since the abolition of slavery, we have large, blacks have had large amounts of money because also, too, that's true, because they said that also, too, 
this whole concept that we were always in poverty is not necessarily true. Black people have always had in this country. Yes, we had our poverty too. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sweep that under the rug, but to, to say one-sided that we all came from a poverty-stricken people is not necessarily true. You understand what I'm saying? If you, if you do per capita and understand the time that we were in in the 1920s and shit, it's the same shit on the level we on now. Probably better. You see what I'm saying? Because the disparity and the gap was not as big. Bobby, hmm? there's a book called Aristocrats of Color that talk about that. Yeah, they've, they've had money. Millionaires in the 1600s in America during slavery. Mm. Millionaires. Mm. You see, so that's, a, that's another form of slave concept. That you didn't have shit before. But in, in segregation, that's why they stopped segregation, because they knew we had it all. Right, right. That's why they, had, they said, that, look, these people are producing a subculture that, that is on a whole other level that ended up becoming the culture for America. America had to borrow for this shit. For the, what came out of, out of segregation, America borrowed for the next 100 years, up until the millennium. So whatever came out of, out of the first... 50 or 60 or 70 years of, 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 segre, of, of segregation is the fabric of what America became great behind. You know what I'm saying? To this particular day. Now, um, greed, another powerful weapon uh, of blacks is 